What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna look at how to add these offset image borders to image card blocks. And we're gonna offset the border to the left or the right, depending on the image's left or right position. Now, in order to write more effective CSS, it's important to understand the structure of image blocks. So let's right click and inspect the image block and look at its structure and that way we'll be able to see the components that make up the image block and how to write effective CSS for it. So in this column, we have an image block and this is the only image, or this is the only block in the section. Now every block in Squarespace gets a class of SQS block added to it. And if you've added an image block, then it gets a class of image dash block. So if we toggle that open, we have this SQS block content class, all blocks get that one as well. And then we have this uh, figure element and it has a bunch of different classes on it. And this is really kind of like the, this tells us a lot of information about the image block. So for one, it tells us that the design layout for the block is set to card. So if we wanted to write CSS specific to image card blocks, that's the class that we can use to make sure that it doesn't apply to like posters or inline blocks, for example. Uh, it, we can see the type of animation on this image block. It's set to the site default. Uh, I haven't added any specific animation to the block. Um, and then we can see that uh, the image position is set to the left for this block. And that's important because we're gonna be adding, we're gonna be moving our little border to the left or to the right, depending on whether the image is set to the position of left or right. So that's really the, the key takeaways from this element here are that the design layout is set to card and that the image position is on the left. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna target this element here uh, and I only wanna target image blocks that are set to design layout card. So I'm gonna target that class with a period. Design layout card and I'll open up some curly brackets. So um, we now need to find a container within this image card that we can add our border to. So if I toggle this open, uh, we have this, we can't use this element here that we just targeted because it houses both the image and the text and we only wanna add the border to our image. So this intrinsic class, as I hover over it, you can see only the image is highlighted. So this will be a good container to add our border to. So I'll come down inside of the curly brackets for this element and I'm gonna target dot intrinsic. And I'll open up some more curly brackets. Uh, and actually we're gonna add an after pseudo element to this element. So I'll write colon, colon, after. If you only wanna write one colon, that's totally fine. Um, but after pseudo elements can also accept two colons but that is beside the point. So anytime you write a after or before pseudo element, you have to include the content property. And if you're not gonna put any content in it, then you can just leave it blank. If we were to put a, some text here, you'll probably see some text appear on the page. So before and after pseudo elements allow you to inject content into the HTML via CSS. So it gives us a little bit of control over content that we can add to the site. Uh, but again, we're just doing it through the CSS. We're not actually changing any of the HTML, hence why it's called a pseudo element, because it's not actually a real element in the HTML. It's just added through the CSS. Okay, so we don't actually wanna add any like words or anything. So we're gonna go ahead and leave this content blank, but we do wanna add a background color. So first let's add a background, just so we can see the element eventually. Uh, and we'll just add a black background. We need to position it. We'll give it a position of absolute. And we'll give it an inset of zero, meaning uh, its top should be zero, its right should be zero, its left and bottom, it should all be zero. And that'll basically, because it has a position of absolute and an inset of zero, it's going to span 100% width and height of its parent element. Um, and the intrinsic class, it's very important, the intrinsic class does have a position of relative, which is important because absolutely positioned elements will position themselves relative to the nearest parent 
that has a position also defined. So since the intrinsic has a position of relative and our after pseudo element has a position of absolute and an inset of zero, we now get our image totally covered. So uh, that's not exactly what we wanna do. We wanna add border. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a border and I'll do one pixel and I'll make it solid and I'll make it black. And now we can get rid of our background color because we don't need that anymore. And you can see we get this nice thin border here. I'm gonna crank that up to two pixels. Okay, so now we get our border around our element, but we wanna offset it uh, to the left or to the right based on the class that the image has. Remember, uh, that element that gets a class depending on whether the image is positioned to the left or the right. So if the image is positioned to the left, we want to move our border over to the left. So the way that we can do that is, um, I'll drop down here after the curly bracket, and I'm gonna write ampersand dot image position left. We're gonna target that class. Then we're gonna target our intrinsic class, and we're gonna target our after pseudo element, and we're gonna transform it. We're gonna give it a transform, translate of minus 15 pixels, comma 15 pixels. So that's gonna move it over minus 15 pixels to the left and 15 pixels down from the top. So now we get this nice little like offset border here. Uh, and if you want it to be behind the image, we can just give this a Z index of negative one. And now it's gonna appear behind the image. So it really just depends on the style that you wanna go for. Um, it looks pretty cool above the image. For me, I wanna make it go behind the image. And you can see down here, it's gonna automatically apply to any image card block that has an image aligned to the left. But right now it's not showing on any image card blocks that are aligned to the right. Now um, to explain the CSS a little bit more, what the ampersand does um, is it's using the less preprocessor, which Squarespace has built into the custom CSS window. And this is just a the less preprocessor lets you do some shortcuts in CSS. It adds some functionality that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. And one of the things that it lets you do is it allows you to, when you have an element inside another element's curly brackets, it allows you to add an ampersand and that basically just says, take whatever is up here and then copy it right here. So what we're doing is we're targeting uh, the design layout card. And then when that design layout card also has an image position of left, and remember those two classes are on the same element. So we have our design layout card and our image position of left both on the same element. So in that case, we don't want to include a space between those selectors. So that's why there isn't a space here. So we're saying when the design layout card also has a class of image position left, we're then gonna target our intrinsic after pseudo element and we're gonna move it over to the left and down 15 pixels. Now we can do the same thing for when the image position is to the right, except now we'll bump it over 15 pixels and that's gonna bump it to the right. So you can see, bump it over 15 pixels and that moves it to the right. Now um, I've saved this brand color here, this brand color green as a variable. And that's another cool thing that you can do with the less preprocessor is you can set up variables here. So at variable name, and then colon, and then the value of the variable. So in this case, I've saved the hex code to this at green variable. So instead of black, I can just write at green, and now my borders are gonna be her brand green. So that's something that I like to do on all my sites for all the brand colors that I'm working with. I'll save them as variables at the top, and then I can easily use them in my CSS without having to search through and find the brand hex codes and paste it in a bunch of hex codes. I can manage them all at the top of the custom CSS window and then just easily target the variables in the custom CSS. So you can see we've now written a very functional piece of CSS here. We will only get a border on image blocks that are set to card. And if it's the image is aligned to the left, 
the border will automatically be offset to the left. And if the image is aligned to the right, our border is going to be offset to the right. So a pretty little cool functional piece of CSS that we just wrote here. Now, if you want to copy this CSS, then you can check out the blog post linked in the description below. All right, I hope you enjoyed this one. Hopefully learned some cool CSS tricks. If you enjoyed it, go ahead, subscribe to my channel, give a like on the video, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.